So you're just getting into recording and making songs in FL Studio, but you don't know exactly how to work the DAW and how you're supposed to route your vocals and put effects on your vocals and things like that. So that's exactly what I'm going to teach you to do in this video. So let's just get right to it. Now, what you're going to need before you even start any of the routing process is an audio interface and obviously a computer that can have FL Studio on it. So obviously the computer will allow you to have FL Studio and be able to run it. And the audio interface allows you to take the audio that you sing into your mic through a cord and into your PC. And the audio interface is what has the inputs on it and we'll talk about inputs later. So this is the first thing you're gonna see when you open um, a new basic 808 with limiter or you can open one from a template, but this is basically a new template right here. So as you can see, there's a lot of controls and stuff at the top right here. So obviously these ones are pretty self-explanatory. This is the pause play button. This will take it back to the beginning, the record button, BPM, metronome, um, other things like that. And then what we have over here are some other controls. So this will bring up just the whole layout of your song. This will bring up the piano roll and allow you to put notes down if you're making a beat in FL. This button right here, the third one, will bring up how many instruments uh, you have on that certain pattern. And then this button, which is probably the most important for the video we're doing today, will bring the mixer up. So yeah, right here we have the mixer. So yeah, in the mixer, as you can see, there's a bunch of different tracks down here. Um, on the far left is the master track. And then just to the right of that are gonna be all these separate tracks or buses, whatever you wanna call them. And this section is what we're really gonna dive into in this video. So right here, I'm just gonna drag a beat in right here. And then um, what we can do is I usually route the beat to the very first track. So right here, all I'm gonna do is double click on the beat and then right here up in the top right, I can just put that on one. And what that will do is it'll route this to track one right here. So as you can see, if I play the beat, I can adjust the volume of the beat if I want right here, or I can put a different effects on it over here. So yeah, I just usually route the beat to the first track right here. I don't typically mess with the beat too much unless I want to put like an EQ on it or something, but that's just what I do just so I can tweak the volume a little bit if I want to. And then track two is going to be my first vocal recording track. So right here, what I can do is right click on that track, hit rename, and then I can just name it whatever I want. So I'm just going to name this vocals one like that. And then you can change the color if you want, if you want to color coordinate your tracks. So I'll just put it purple. So right here, as you can see, it's named vocals one. So this is going to be the track that you record the vocals to. So over here, as you can see on the right, what this does right here is you can pick your input. So this will tell you where you're recording from, from your audio interface. So I'm going to click input one right here, and then you can just click yes on this. So now since we put input one on this track, this track is going to have the ability to record uh, the audio that comes into your first input. And in that case, it's my microphone. As you can see down here, this little red button, this is what shows you if your input is on or off. So if I turn it off like this, the microphone isn't going to pick up any audio. And then when you turn it on, it is going to pick up the audio. So when recording, you have to make sure this button is toggled on but I'm just gonna toggle it off for now since I'm not recording. So yeah, that's how you route the very first track. So now this is a mistake that I see a lot of people make, which is putting your vocal effects in like your mix directly on the recording track. So I'm actually gonna change the name of this so it's a little bit easier to understand. So this is only the recording track. This is how you're getting the audio from your mic to your computer. So this is only recording. So I can't stress this enough. You do not want to put your effects directly on the recording track because then you're gonna record the effects directly on to the recording, if that makes sense. So you won't be able to tweak and change the effects. You'll just have to re-record it every single time. So the better way to do this would be go to the next track, which is track three right here. And I would rename this effects or um, mix, like vocal mix, and you can change it to whatever color you like. I'm just going to do the same color. So this is where you're going to put your mix and where you can put all your effects on the vocal. But the way that you can get these effects onto the recording track without actually recording the effects onto the vocal is you can make sure you have your recording track selected and then go down here to this little arrow on the track you want to route it to, which would be my mix track right here. So yeah, make sure you have your recording track selected and then right click on the little arrow on the mix track and then hit route to this track only. So this will allow you to have two separate tracks, a recording track and a mix track or effects track for your vocals. So this will allow you to tweak and change the effects that you created on the mix track, but not have to re-record the take every single time as the effects and mix will not be recorded onto the vocal. So it's always nice to have two separate tracks like this. So yeah, still going with the mix track, what you can do now is this is where you can put all your effects on. So if you wanna put an auto tune right here on there, you can do that. 
um, an EQ, a compressor. This is where you're basically going to do your entire vocal mix and all the stuff like that. So that's where you can have your mix and your effects. Now, again, you can go even further with this method of making multiple tracks for different effects. So if you want to have like, let's say the reverb independent from the mix, then you can create even another track right here. Um, rename it reverb. And this is what I personally do when I record my vocals and it's worked very well. So yeah, anyways, if I want to have my reverb independent from my mix, all I have to do is create another track right here and then just slap my reverb on there just like that. So this is on the reverb track right here. And then to be able to hear the reverb on the mix track, all you have to do is select your mix track right here, go down to the arrow. Don't right click it this time, just left click on the arrow and it will route it to that track. The reason I didn't route it to this track only is just in case I want to add some other effects so that I can have multiple choices right here. Like if I wanted to add like an extra bus right here with some other effects on it, but you can just route multiple and you can route as many as you want, as you can see right here. So yeah, this is how I would route my lead vocal track right here. And if you want to have a different track for not lead vocals, like ad libs or background vocals like that, you can create a whole nother recording track. You're not only allowed to have one. So right here, what I'm going to do is rename it again, do recording yet again. And then I'll change this probably to a different color this time. But again, it doesn't really matter. It just comes down to how you like to organize your buses. So yeah, we're going to have another recording track right here. So again, we're going to go to the right over here and hit input one. So we can use the same input on two different tracks. The only thing you have to be aware of is when recording, you want to make sure that this red button down here is only toggled on on the track that you want to record on. Because if you have this red button toggled on on both of the recording tracks, then it's going to record both at the same time and it's just not going to sound good. So yeah, make sure only one of these red buttons is toggled on at a time and make sure it's the one that you want to record on. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the very next track to the recording track. Um, and I'm just going to rename this mix, but this is going to be the mix for the ad libs. So I'm just going to put that in. So I just know the difference and then change it to the same color. And then I'm going to go down to this little arrow down here, right click and then click route to this track only. And then you have a whole nother recording track down here. So when you're done recording your lead vocals, you can go over here to the recording track, click the little record button, make sure the lead vocal button is off. And you can have a whole different mix or effects preset on this track than the first recording track. And it's just a very good way to organize and compartmentalize your different mixes and presets that you have. So yeah, in its simplest form, this is how you can route your tracks together. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helped you out. If you did, please leave a like. Also, drop your artist name in the comments because I want to hear your guys' music. Again, thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Talk now, I just want